superconductors. Superconductors are uh, materials that uh, have the property that they lose all resistance to the flow of electricity when you lower their temperature. And so we mean that uh, they suffer no losses due to um, you know, heat or electron scattering or any other mechanisms. They basically have no resistance. If we look at the uh, increasing needs for energy within the United States, uh, obviously you have to worry about uh, production of energy, uh, storage of energy and transmission of energy. And um, we, you know, we may, uh, for instance, produce energy in one part of the country and use it uh, uh, in another part. Uh, I mean, if we look at, say, solar energy, uh, the place that we may most likely will produce that will be in the southwest, in the Arizona region. That's a, a, a candidate region. But the northeast, where we are in New York, is one of the biggest users of energy. So we have to move that energy from the southwest to the northeast. And we need high efficiency transmission lines to do that. Currently, we, we lose probably about 7 to 10 percent of the energy that we produce in the transmission lines. And that is, I mean, that may sound a small number, but it actually uh, amounts to a huge amount of energy and a huge uh, uh, expense in terms of you know, dollars, etc. So if we can find ways of inc pushing that transmission up to 100 percent, which we potentially could with superconducting wires, then obviously we're in a much better position from the point of view of energy usage. The new materials that we're now working on go superconducting at higher temperatures, which uh, will make it less expensive, but we still need to understand their properties, we need to understand the mechanism that leads to that superconductivity, and we need to understand how to produce uh, those wires uh, you know, that we're going to need more efficiently. In a traditional superconductor, the um, electrons pair and, uh, and then the whole material becomes superconducting at the same time. Technically, we refer to that as establishing long-range phase coherence. Uh, but um, in the new materials, the high TC materials, our new work has given us some indication uh, that the electrons actually pair together before they achieve that long-range phase coherence, that superconducting state. And so these electrons are starting to dance around together uh, but the, the material has not yet uh, reached a temperature where it goes superconducting. A dream superconductor, although it might not have the properties that we necessarily wanted, would be one that went superconducting at room temperature. Then we wouldn't have to worry about cooling it at all. Um, however, um, that uh, remains a sort of an elusive goal for this field. Uh, nobody knows quite how to do that yet. But um, as we are learning more about these materials, uh, we will hopefully push up the transition temperature. But also we need to know how to manufacture them on a large scale, uh, such that they will retain their superconducting properties and work efficiently for an extended time. Those are all challenges that we still have. The excitement in science is discovering something that hasn't been known about before. And for us, as I said earlier, this is one of the biggest challenges in condensed matter physics. So the fact that we might be able to get there first, put a flag on the mountain if you like, is, uh, is a real excitement.